Welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Real Fit Pros. It's your boy, Jonathan Loudermilk, your host with the most. And as always, I got my main man, Mark, the fitness ninja, zalman off with me. And we got a damn good episode for you today and a damn good story with a lesson attached to it. But for- it oh. Well, I was going to say, like, if you're just listening to this and not seeing it, uh, we're actually in the same room this, <laughs> this time. Because my internet must be like Joe Biden's brain or something. Uh, it's all fucking jumbled up. It cuts on. It goes off. Like, whatever. So, John actually came over to my house. because We live like 10 minutes away from each other. And uh, we're recording this in person together. Yeah. So, magic's going to happen. Absolutely. I fucking know it. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, yeah. We got an event next week. So, if you're listening to this, go get a fucking ticket. We'll put the link in the show notes. Uh, it's going to be awesome. We got great speakers, ton of value CEUs for those of you who, who still do that thing. Uh, we actually, we, we went to some gyms last week that they value that still. So, you know, it still has its place. I don't, I don't ever knock furthering your education and, and knowing how to help people a little bit better, but you know, our mission and what we do is to help you on the other side of things, which is what nobody ever teaches you the business side, the personal relationship side, the social media side, like nobody's doing that. I think if we knew that before, we'd have less fit pros. Probably. hundred percent. Like, wait, I got to, I got to post on social. (laughs) Yeah, you do motherfucker. (laughs) I mean, if you want business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. That being important. But (sighs) with that being said, I've got a story that I'd like to share. So this is actually from a fit pro that had reached out to me a couple weeks ago. Um, he, he was interested in the content that I was putting out there. So I drummed up conversation. Um, I decided to put together a plan for him and kind of map out really how for him to you know find more of his ideal client and, and more importantly, how to do it in a way so that he could actually create conversations with people that are the right fit and they're actually interested in what he does. So as I mapped that out, he decides to uh, not fucking listen to anything I said. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Like, he didn't listen to fucking any of it. And I could tell. So I just said, God bless you. It, just think about it. If it resonates, come find me later. Well, I look on social media today, and uh, one of our uh, friends inside uh, Apex, was one of the masterminds that me and Mark were a part of, um, was putting out this post, and it was a screenshot of the very fucking guy. <laughs> That I was helping, right? And it was a screenshot of your typical, hey, so-and-so, uh, I can help you lose 15 pounds and drop your body fat. Blah, 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 blah. When do you want to talk? And it was just a straight up cold DM. But this guy, kind of a big deal, right? He's got a big following. He screenshotted it, didn't even black out dude's name, and is blasting the fuck out of him on social media right now. It's hundreds of comments. I was like, no, this is exactly why I was telling you, bro. To not go out there and be a taker, but to set up your ecosystem and your marketing in a way that it provides value first. Otherwise, you end up getting blasted on social media and people are making fun of you. So I actually reached out to him and was like, hey, dude, I just want to let you know that this happened just so you're aware. And his response to me was all press is good press. (laughs) That's that's debatable, very debatable. Because, like, think about it. Like, do you really want to be blasted out there under a bad context of, like, hey, here's how I'm doing this and having literally your ideal client, which is business owners for this guy, fucking mocking you on social media? So, like, my heart went out to him and I reached out to him again. I was like, dude, this is why I was sharing with you why you need to give value first and not give it from a place of I expect you to do business with me now. It's the same thing with dating. If you go out on a date with someone and you're like, hey, I expect to get laid tonight. Probably not going to yeah, work out. Yeah, you're probably, no. Probably not getting laid. If you got to ask for it, you ain't getting it. I've learned that. <laughs> and, and to reiterate your point, you know, this guy that this coach reached out to is has been a professional bodybuilder. The dude is fucking shredded year round. Oh, yeah. Like he may be someone that coaches want as a client, but he's not people's ideal client. Like, I would look at that guy and go, I know he's got coaches. If I want in his world, I'm going to add value in some way, shape, or form. I'm not going to ask him, hey, you want to lose 10 pounds? That dude walks around like 6% body fat year round. So it's the wrong fucking person to reach out to with that type of approach. And when you talk about all press is good press, if people don't know who you are, 
That is not true whatsoever. And like you said, it's debatable in general. You know, if you're in the public eye, if you're famous already, if you're an actor, if you're an athlete, like, yeah, I mean, you can say that all press is good press in that realm because people got eyes on you again. They're like, oh, what's this guy doing? You go down the rabbit hole, whatever, good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, we see people in the public eye fuck things up all the time and turn it around into a win. Well, but that's because they already have a following. They're already known. People already like them. And there's certain people, you know, I, I look at politicians, you know, both sides of the coin, like Trump and Biden could go out in the street and club a baby seal and people are going to fucking defend them. Like regardless, be like, well, you know, what was that baby seal doing before then? <laughs> you know, was that baby seal for or against that's, abortion? Like baby seal had it coming, <laughs> you know, so that's always going to happen. But when you're trying to build a business, you're trying to build a reputation and a name for yourself, right. there is a right and a wrong way to do it. And that's absolutely the wrong way to do it. Yeah, man. You're just shooting yourself in the foot. And it, it goes back to this like idea that you know I've really been cultivating over the last few months is you know social media is not a shortcut. It's an extension, right, of what we already do. And it really goes back to what you talked about, man. Like when we first got connected and started working with each other, you talked about the whole idea. Like, if you met someone in the grocery store, you're going to pull up your fucking shirt and go, hey, look at my abs. By the way, I've got a fat last program. It's 12 weeks. You pay your first and you last. Like, you know, like nobody fucking does that. So why are we doing this on social media? Why are we trying to take shortcuts? Why are we trying to take the relationship component out of it? And if you are doing that, why the fuck are you a coach? <laughs> it's a whole fucking point right yeah you yeah. tell them we're fired up today because you don't you don't coach people like that and you know we've talked about this a little bit about us going out to some local gyms in our area and, and bringing goodie bags and just connecting with people that connection is what brings people to you and coaching online in person doesn't matter it's a personal relationship like very few of you if you're listening to this very few of you are creating programs that you're going to sell to the masses where you're just banking on, you know, thousands of people buying your shit. Like that's just, that's probably not where you are in your stage of business right now. And we're not saying you can't do that. Not saying you can't get there. Not saying that it shouldn't be a goal at some point, if that's what you want. But most of us are building a personal relationship business that just so happens to be fitness as the vehicle. Well, here's the other thing too, man. Like I've heard Gary Vaynerchuk say tons of times that, he personally engages with it, all the posts that come out there. And that guy's a big fucking deal. Mm. So even when we get to those levels, it's not a fucking excuse to go into relationships, not important anymore because I've grown to this level because that will be your very undoing. I fucking promise you that if you ever lose sight of that, this is a relationship industry first and a fitness industry. Second, I saw this, uh, this interview with him, like a recent interview where he had made some prediction, like, I don't know, 10, eight years ago about something and just got railed on Twitter. And he went back and personally responded to everyone. It was like, it was like 3000 comments or retweets or something that people are calling him an idiot. And he, he, he personally went back and responded to every single. Oh, I would them. too. <laughs> I would so too. Great. So great. Dude, that, well, I called gold shutting down. I called 24 hour calling chapter 11. That was a little bit of my like, fuck Dojo. Like yeah. I worked in both those companies. They were on their last legs before COVID hit. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But I think the real moral of this episode is what are you doing intentionally to build real relationships with people? If you master that and focus on that, you will literally trip into sales. Like I'll give you another example. I just signed up a one-on-one -on -one client and this is someone that I've talked to for probably a couple of years on and off, but I got intentional within the last couple of months because I've been seeing him putting in the work and he's showing the right behaviors, yeah. right? And I was like, you know what? I can help that person. So I reached out to him and I just started helping him. I just started giving him some of the pieces and making it simple for him. And by the time we got to like that second, third call, and I was like, all right, this is feeling pretty good. You know, I, Mark's voice popped in my head, <laughs> right? And I think it was like a couple episodes you brought this up again, but it was a great point, man, which is why I, I like doing these podcasts as much for you guys as it is for me, because I learn stuff every time just by talking and saying things. But by going through that experience, it allowed me to, to remember how simple this can be, just like in dating. Like I just asked him, I was like, hey, 
what are your thoughts about working with me? Like, I would love to work with you. Here's why I would love to work with you. Here's what I see. Here's what I see where we could go, but no pressure. What are your thoughts? And he actually said, Man, I've been thinking about working with you for a while, actually. So if I hadn't had asked, we never would have gotten to that stage to where now we're working together. But my whole point being is I focus on solving the problem first, and then I focus on asking for the next thing after that. Yeah. And there's no perfect timing for that. And, you know, you have to, you have enough conversations with enough people over the years and you start to be able to read people a little bit better and figure out when that timing is. But a lot of people, again, they're, they're afraid to take the next step. Yeah. And we have to be the ones to be bold enough to just ask, Hey, have you ever thought about hiring a coach? I mean, that's such a simple question. And I've never had anybody go, what? What the fuck are you talking about? Like <laughs> in yeah. 20 years, I've never had anybody go off on me if I'm asking them, hey, right. have you thought about hiring me because I would like to help you? Well, the whole point is if you add value before you ask, the chances go up. So just like once again, this all goes back to dating. If you see like your dream guy, your dream girl, whatever you're into, right? And you go up to him, you wouldn't just walk up straight up to him and go, hey, would you like to go out sometime? Like you're probably gonna get shot down, right? They're gonna be like, "Who fuck's this person?" You I know? mean, if you did it a hundred times, well, somebody... well, that, well, that's the cold DMing strat, right? Right, right. right? Hey, <laughs> do you want to do wanna that? Go up? You want to go out? Which, don't get me wrong. When I was in my younger age, you know, I'd go to the bar, I'd check out scenery, I'd be like, "Now I'm gonna get at least one of these women." <laughs> <laughs> Hope Renee is not listening. Obviously, you made me a better man. But my whole point being is if we really look at it as the dating process, which we are all coded within our DNA to court whatever you're fucking into, right? It's ingrained in us, right? So there's going to be some certain things that we're just naturally built to do. That dating process is part of what's coded in our DNA. And I see sales is no different. And when you start to really mix those together and get in alignment, not only is your sales going to go up, but you're going to feel good about it because you're actually only working with the people that are in alignment that you want to work with. It's not just taking on people. It's like, well, I like the money, but they're pain in the fucking ass. Yeah. You know, we, we've talked about it a lot. Every, everyone is not your ideal client. No. Maybe, maybe in year one of your training, well, journey, you take everyone because you need that bread. I got you. You need money. I got you. Yeah. Bring them on. All yeah. of big, fat, little, well, short. Here's yeah. the other part. You don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, know what I mean? You don't know who you like to serve yet. You don't know what type of training you really like to do. But over time, you have to dwindle that down. And it doesn't have to be like, well, I only train, you know, midgets who like to run <laughs> in the dark. And like, you know. Dude, that would be a killer niche. Oh, you'd crush it. Midgets in the dark. Yeah. You'd crush it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take a little royalty if anybody. I don't know how big that target audience is. It's but... a half size. <laughs> half the size of the normal target audience uh, uh but anyway <laughs> that was too easy i'm that was, done that was too easy i'm done but you know you don't you don't want a business where you're constantly chasing people right. and and feeling that like chaotic feeling because i've felt that before it's like fuck i need another client i need to find somebody and then you get in that desperation mode where you are cold dming people and and people that you've never had a conversation with, or maybe you said something in passing at some point, and all of a sudden you're trying to pitch them your shit. Nobody wants to buy like that. No. We don't like to be sold like that. Nobody wants to buy like that. No. So you have those genuine conversations. You show up. You add value. And we just can't stress enough how meaningful that is. And the law of reciprocation always applies. Like People will want to do business with you at some point. I just had a buddy of mine. He just shot me a text like an hour ago that we're recording this. He's asking a question about macros. Like we've never formally worked together. At some point, I'm fairly certain that guy's going to hire me to coach him. Oh, yeah. For a short term, for a long term, doesn't really matter. But when he reaches out, he's always super respectful about my time. And I never feel taken advantage of. He knows that like he comes equipped with a question that actually has an answer he's to intentional. it. Yeah, he's very intentional. So, oh, so for me... I'm willing to respond to that because I see that he values me as a human. He values my expertise. He's very intentional. And then he's out, you know, and he's like, okay, thanks. You know, I really appreciate it. Yeah. So, you know, those are the type of people that I want to work with. And I guarantee you, I could reach out to him four weeks from now and be like, Hey, you ever thought about hiring me? 
and who knows what could happen, you know, and if the timing's right, then, then I'll do it. But those are the type of people that you want to work with. You don't want to be fucking fishing all day long, cold DMing people and getting blasted on the internet because of it. It's well, not a good look. Well, there, there's no one out there that's going to close me on. This is a, this is the way, right? Now, look, anything will fucking work. If you throw enough shit against the wall, something's going to stick. That's the, that's the downside of this. And this is where people get tricked is where they learn a strategy like this. They get a little bit of a result, and then they think that this is their vehicle to success, mm -hmm. where it's like, no, 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 no. There's a way better way to do that. Think about it this way. How many times do you see someone in the gym that's like, I'm trying to get big, but they're doing like stamina weight loss type workouts? It's like, yeah, you're going to get you're gonna get some muscle off that, but if I could show you a more effective way with your program design that we could focus on hypertrophy, would that be of value to you? then that person's going to respond in kind as you go yeah. through that. And it's just tweaking the program a little bit. It's the same for your business. One or two tweaks within how your approach goes can make all the difference on that response on that other side. And never get stuck doing the same thing. You know, you, it, it's, it's really easy to always fish from the same pond and do the same thing when it's working, but just like fitness and nutrition, at some point you hit that plateau yeah. It doesn't work anymore. And if you haven't been exploring a couple of other realms, getting in front of people, you know, I'm, I'm on a kick right now about going showing my face in front of people because I know I'm good at that. I know I connect really quickly and really well with people in person. So that's part of my strategy right now to grow my business is to do that. Yeah, I'm still going to do social media. I'm not going to get rid of that. I'm not an idiot. But you know, I, I have to go get in front of people. So don't, don't always pour yourself into just one strategy. I don't care how well it's working. Like maybe that's 90% of what you're doing, but that other 10%, you need to be figuring out a couple of other avenues, whether it's networking, whether it's strategic partnerships. Uh, we actually talked about that on our fit pro collective coaching call yesterday. One of our, our clients, David is uh, he had a client that referred him to her doctor because her blood work looks so good. So the doctor's happy. So the doctor she's goes, happy. what the hell are you doing? And she's like, well, I've been working with David. He's like, I need to meet David. Dude, that's awesome. So things like that, you know, those are those are those outlying things that they're not a quick fix. No. It's not a guaranteed anything, but it's going to be well worth his time and investment to go explore that route, have some conversations. Again, add value first. And know that he will get it back in, in, you know, tenfold in the long run. Yeah. And, and that's the crazy thing. And not to get too woo woo with you on this episode, but, you know, you brought up that example of that one guy that you just help when you need to help and you're planting those seeds. You know, I can't tell you how many times I would have a relationship where maybe they couldn't help me or I couldn't help them directly at that moment. But it's led to maybe that person that they know. Yep that becomes a client or becomes a referral partner or whatever that may be. And that's not up for us to figure out and to dwell over. Our job is to show up, be authentic to who we are and have impactful conversations, with, which is adding value, which will lead to those opportunities. And to piggyback on your point, yeah, you should be diversifying how you're bringing people in. Same thing you hear in entrepreneurship. You got to have multiple streams of income, <laughs> right? Not to get too much, like you got to get crypto and you got to get this, but you know, just keeping it simple, like, yeah, you should have multiple feeder systems coming in, but you can't get the multiple if you don't have one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's for damn sure. Yeah. So, you know, be intentional about what you're doing. Don't spray and pray. Please, God, don't Dude, do that. Especially if I help you. <laughs> no, for real, I'm going to say this. If I get on a call with you and I give you this and then you go, fuck that guy, and you just go do whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> and then you get that. I don't feel sorry for yeah, you. Yeah, I don't feel sorry I for you. I fucking don't. <laughs> like, I literally gave him everything. I gave him, like, the, the offer to do. And he's like, oh, no, okay, I'm going to do this. Anyway, don't do that, please. Especially if you talk to me. You're going to piss me off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about it. It's no different than a than a fitness client, right? Like, you give them the plan. You give, oh, yeah. You give them the meal plan. Like, lay it all out. They want to lose X amount of weight. I got you. And then they just go fucking eat pizza and cheeseburgers. <laughs> and they're still back. You're like, well, fuck you, then. Like, don't you listen to me. I, I don't care. You know what I love? When you do that that that, uh, that uh, fitness assessment in the gym, like, oh, yeah, I want that. I get that fitness consultation, right? You're like, oh, fuck, this person's way too excited. What do you want? Can you just show me all the machines and build my program? And, and then you go, all right, let me show you some basic things you can start with and do and do this. And the thing that would kill me is I wouldn't see him do any of that shit. Zero. Fucking none of it. 
right? After I'm like, here you go. I actually gave you what you wanted. Didn't try to reverse sell you and 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 give you just enough and go, well, you got to pay for rest. Just go, here you go. And then they don't fucking do anything with it, which is exactly <laughs> why you need to invest in coaches, which is why you need to make sure that your people are investing in you. That skin in the game is what activates that extra level of action, which is where everything happens. Damn right. You know? So as always, if you need help, reach out. That's what we're here for. Real Talk with Real Fit Pros Facebook group. It is a free group. There's lots of free trainings in there. Um, you know, John and I are always happy to connect with people. Got a live event, fitprocollectivelive.com next week, September 15th to 16th, Allen, Texas. Yeah. If you own a gym or a studio, you got employees or whatever, reach out to us. We've got a special deal for y'all. But uh, that's all we got. Yeah. Take it on home, homie. Come join our event next week, and let's go get what you're worth. Yeah. yeah. Damn good. <laughs>